I'm not going to read this shit. What? Oh, we're recording? All right. Welcome to yet another Tool webcast. Reminds me, the music business is a cruel and shallow money trench, a long plastic hallway where thieves and pimps run free and good men die like dogs. There's also a negative side. Hunter S. Thompson. Before we get started, the band would like to thank members of the collective for submitting their well-thought-out questions. Unfortunately, they can't answer any of them. Now, actually, unfortunately, out of the hundreds of questions received, many of these can't be answered at this time. Questions having to do with specifics such as the name of the new CD, titles of individual songs, guest musicians, producers, engineers, cover artwork, the color of shoes worn during overdose, etc. That's because right now, during the initial writing stage, it's still too early in the entire process for these kind of things to be known. Even Nostradamus didn't know these things. Nostradamus? Nostradamus. Yeah. Well, actually, he might have. I'm still on the clock examining the various quatrains, hoping to tease out a relevant passage. All right. Right now, the band's been jamming for a couple of months, so at this point, someone thought they'd check in with him, see how things are going. So I'm talking to Danny, Adam, and Justin right now. By the way, where is Maynard? Is he not here? I thought I... I think he went to the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ready? And these Ready. Are from the... Knowing that all of you have musical side projects during your time off, in quotes, between tool projects, when you come up with a certain riff or drum beat or even a complete song, is it immediately apparent to you or sometimes difficult to decide whether or not this is for tool only? this particular riff, and not for the side project, whatever it might be. Yeah, I always find it easy um, to know what kind of lives with in the tool camp and what's, you know, drastically different. With the pygmies, it's pretty big contrast of style, so it's pretty easy to discern which one. Yeah, I think it's apparent to me, you know, coming up with a riff going, Ah, oh, this would be great for Tool. Things that I've jammed with other people, I, if, you know, if it was my riff, I'd try jamming it with these guys just to see what will happen. Because it always seems to really change and broaden. I think we, we talked about it like it's like wolves pulling an animal apart, what, it, what that turns into. Yeah, I think it's always the stuff that you do outside of Tool is to do something really different. So it's pretty self-evident what, you know, what lives where. Okay. Lateralis is considerably positive piece in comparison to the previous albums, both musically and visually. Color scheme, for example. Will the next album continue with this progression? Danny? Depends on what drugs we take. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so, going to be so positive that it was going to be called Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> You want to answer that, Adam? I think it's still early to tell. Each album kind of has its own feeling. Just stay away from the brown acid. <laughs> it's different <laughs> to different people as well. Some people think it's a really, really dark album, the last one, you know? So it's interesting to hear that someone thinks it's really positive. So who knows how the next one will be interpreted. All right, here's one. Uh, with band members indulging in different projects, has this made the writing and rehearsing difficult, easier, or not any difference at all? It's probably made it a bit easier because everyone's been playing a lot more. But constantly, all of last year, everyone's been pretty up to speed with what they're doing. Got the game fitness. Yeah, I mean, it's like going out on sabbaticals or something. It gives you a kind of a fresh perspective and something to offer and to our collective chemistry, you know, that we wouldn't have come across otherwise, maybe, so it helps. Yeah, playing with uh, other people in side projects or whatnot, kind of, uh, you, you know, you find out that chemistry is always different, working with different people, so coming back together with these guys kind of uh, makes you realise what you've got, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like coming back to a comfortable space. So it's, it's pretty rewarding, you know, no matter what, what, how it's going with other projects or people. It's really rewarding in the end to come back and, like, get on with this stuff and, and 
do it better and appreciate it better than before. Are there any particular inspirations for the writing process this time around? Nothing in particular. It's like pretty much life in general. It's just another job, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. During the writing process, is there somewhat of a formula that works best for you as far as the early stages of developing a song? Do individual members bring in separate ideas and build them from there? Or are there initial ideas born right there in the rehearsal space once you have all convened to create? Both. We all bring in lots of ideas and we jam them a lot and we tear them apart and put them back together and sometimes in the process we come up with spontaneity, completely fresh, new idea. Do any of you employ any meditative processes prior to a show or prior to writing, rehearsal or recording session that help you in focusing your energy into the music? And in a similar vein, to what degree do visualizations play a role in the creative process? For example, in Adam's bio, where he briefly touches on his ability to manifest visualizations through the music or to draw musical ideas from a work of art. I think it works both ways. You know, a lot of time the music gives rise to the visuals, but then sometimes you're, if you're inspired by art or something you see, sometimes it can give you an idea musically also. There's no rules to it though. Well, as far as like preparing for a show, I think everybody has their own way of doing it, but it is it is a kind of meditation, you know, however long you take before the show to get prepared. It's normally a pretty, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a thought out process that calms you and prepares you and kind of motivates you to, to do it well and professionally and, and perhaps, you know, magically. This might be similar to the other one, but is there anywhere special mentally, physically or spiritually that you go to to write your music or lyrics? I meditate and I transform myself into an animal. Let me show you. Okay, I gotta be really quiet. I'm gonna do it. Change myself into an animal. Has the band ever thought of writing songs or doing any acoustic material or things generally outside of bass, drums, and guitar? Is there a conscious decision not to, or just a, an avenue that hasn't been explored? It's our lifelong dream to appear on MTV Unplugged. <laughs> all right. Considering that all of your albums, with the exception of Saliva, have been progressively longer than the previous, will the new album be two CDs? Yeah, who knows? Whatever it takes. I was thinking four. When creating your music, do you prepare a special atmosphere in your rehearsal space in the studio to enhance the process in any way? Lava lamps and incense. <laughs> no incense. No. Incense sucks. There's like a certain Mexican restaurant we all eat at some days just to kind of add aroma at some point. Incense. Incense. Adam, sitting over there. Adam, did you, by any chance, contribute any forms of artwork or vastmost manipulations of matter to the recently released Melvin's Neither Here Nor There book? I contributed some art. Uh, they asked me if I knew some other people who would want to contribute, so I asked Alex Gray, and he did. And uh, Dave Cooper, who I really like, and uh, Cam, Chet, and a bunch of other people. I've seen the book, it's excellent. Actually, it's their new CD. It's like 300 pages, and it's really awesome if you can find one. All right, um, this is about the Melvins as well, uh, collaborations. Adam, do you plan to write any more music with the Melvins, or even have Buzz or Dale Guest on Tool's new album? The Melvins, they're one of my favorite bands. 
far as them playing on a record, it would have to be appropriate and okay with the rest of the guys. I don't see it happening, but I don't not see it happening. Uh, Adam, during the Crowley Mass chat, you mentioned that your plans on displaying and selling your art at your website. When will this happen? I'd love to do that. I'm uh, just putting the website together, so I, I don't know, but I've, I eventually would like to. Okay, during the uh, Crowley Mass chat, when asked about your rumored solo project, you answered, no solo project, but a collaboration. Who will be on the collaboration album with you? I don't know. I've jammed with some people here and there, but there's you know, no plans of a record coming out. I certainly am not doing an Adam Jones record. Another one for you. I don't know where this guy got this, but I remember Blair mentioning a couple of times in his news posts and newsletters about Adam looking for socks backstage to wear for the show. For the record, uh, I never asked that or I never wrote anything about socks, nor was I ever even aware that you do that. Do we have to pay a royalty on that? That's in the web show. <laughs> so anyway, three times out of the five tool shows I saw on the Lateralis tour in Japan, I was up front and noticed that Adam will start the show in his shoes, then after a few songs, he takes off his shoes and plays the rest of the show in his socks. Why do you do that, Adam? Is it a rocker fashion or is there another reason? I was raised by wolves. <laughs> I'm more comfortable using foot pedals with my bare feet. I trigger a synthesizer with a kind of a Taurus type foot pedal called a PK-5. If I have shoes on, a lot of times I hit two keys instead of just one. I'm, I'm much more comfortable that way. Excellent. Justin, I heard that you use Demeter preamps. Is this true? And if so, hang on. Do you use them only in a studio or on the stage or both? I also heard that you use a zoom pedal. Is that more for a constant tone or just effects? <clears throat> Not sure what a zoom pedal is. <laughs> um, I do use a Demeter preamp for a, a nice, clean, pretty direct, clean sound. So that there's always like the main body of the the sound is kind of preserved, so whatever else you do with an amplifier, you never really lose anything. And I use that live and in the studio. I've got to get myself one of those zoom pedals, definitely. Yeah, we'll find out what that is and get you one. Definitely. Maybe even be free. This is about Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. The experience or first rays of the new rising sun. You can only choose one. The experience. I think you're going to like this one, Justin, even though the name's not spelled right. Hey, did you join Tool because England was all rainy and depressing, and they have bad food too? <coughs> I was in England once, and it was expensive. I would be depressed and write music like Tool plays too, so what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, England's spelled E-N-G-L-I-N-D. England. E -N -G -L -I -N -D. England. But then England, England has the best England. breakfast in the world. And the beer's really nice, too. <laughs> Food's actually not bad in England at all. <coughs> <coughs> Top sausages. Yeah, yeah, we know. We get the England's great. Got it? Yeah. Question from Maynard. I can answer for him. <laughs> He's over there. <laughs> all right, well, we got Danny here with us. Question for Danny. Are you going to do any drumming on the new Skinny Puppy album? If so, any word on its release? It just got mastered three days ago, and I'm on one song, but I don't know how long it's going to take him to set it up and release it. All right. This is also for you, Danny. Called The Gong, so I guess it's about that. Danny, will you make use of The Gong in the next album? Are you oh, going to yeah. bang The Gong? <laughs> yeah, several, several gongs. What I'd like to add is, is the gong, ever, can a gong ever be too loud? <laughs> Never. You want that porthole to the other dimension to be open as wide as possible. All right. Hey, Danny, what happened to the project you were supposedly working on with Les Claypool? I know that the reformation of Primus and your work with Pygmy Love Circus must have put it on the back burner, but are there any plans to continue with the project? We all want to continue with it, but scheduling is getting more and more difficult. You know, Les has three or four projects going, and Adrian's in the same boat, and now 
it's like, I mean, our heart's in it, but I don't know when our schedules will coincide again, so who knows. When you reached the point in writing The Grudge that you were ready to record, what did it feel like the first time you played the finished version with the rest of the guys, especially with that energy at the end? I think you wrote your whole drum part and then went, played it with us and went, wow, this is cool. <laughs> yeah. well, it felt like ecstasy. <laughs> Yeah, one more for Danny here, specifically for him. This is about Killing Joke's latest album. In the build-up to the release <laughs> of the latest Killing Joke album, self-titled, there was much rumor that Danny Carey, as you, would be playing drums on a few tracks. This was later confirmed by Jess Coleman, who said that Danny was due to play on some tracks. So were you disappointed that this didn't happen, and can you shed any light as to why it didn't? Well, it was, it was purely a matter of scheduling when they their deadlines hit, we were still touring on the Lateralis record, so it just didn't end up happening. I think much to all of our dismay, though, but Jordy called me the other day and wants me to play on the next one, so maybe then. All right, there you have it. I'm not going to read this shit. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. There, there, there you have it. I'm not gonna read this. I'm not gonna read this shit, 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 shit. Hell no, hell no. <laughs> all right, there you have it. I'm like, I'm not gonna read this shit. I'm not gonna hear it. Hell no. Hell wrong. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 